And this is, you have to read the sentences out loud and remember the last word of every sentence. So for instance, you have to say, I went home with a taxi, the driver gave me some cash, the sky was clear and blue. Then your task is to remember taxi, cash, and blue. And later on, you have to recall these last words in the correct order. So you have to say taxi, cash, blue. If you say cash, blue, taxi, you get an error. Then it's wrong to reply. And to find out your working memory span, you do loads of different um, number of sentences. So easy one would be just two sentences. Then they go up to three sentences. And then they finally go up to seven, eight, nine sentences. And modern computer programs sometimes are adaptive in a way so that they try to find a good way to measure your, your thing that you, don't, that you don't have to do like 10 tries of 10 sentences where you always score zero or something. So by your performance, how many uh, words did you remember in the correct order? It's calculated your so-called working memory span. And I think I mentioned that last time this working memory span is highly correlated with general intelligence, achievement in school, things like that. So it seems to be a very central measure of cognitive abilities. Another variant is the so-called operation span. Here you have to solve math problems and remember letters. So for instance, you may be asked 3 multiplied by 4 plus 2 equals 40. Is that correct, yes or no? Yeah. 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 And then you are presented the letter D. Please memorize that. And the next question comes up. 10 divided by 2 minus 4 equals 2. Wrong. Wrong, yes. And you say no on the computer keypad, and you press, and the next letter is Q. And so forth. Same version, sometimes only two of these sequences, sometimes are it's seven, eight, nine. At the end, recall the letters in the correct order. This is how the D, Q, and so forth. And in the same way. And there are versions um, which more um, attack the visual system, where you don't have math equations, but you have to solve, for instance, symmetry uh, questions. Are these two shapes symmetrical or not? Things like that. So um, the idea is engage your cognitive system while you have to memorize it. So you have to keep these two things separate from each other. You have to do a task, and at the same time you have to memorize. And you have to shield this information from these operations going on. <clears throat> so when you do that in the ephemeral eye, then again you see that there is lateral prefrontal cortex activation, as would be expected by now, I think. And in addition, this is now an axial slice, like this, in the brain. You have anterior signal cortex. This shows the comparison of a reading span versus reading only. So it's a rather high level comparison. This is what is more if I have to read the sentences and have to memorize the words at the end, as compared to only read the sentences. <coughs> The interpretation of the authors is that the lateral prefrontal cortex is involved in the executive functions of um, implementing control, shielding information, and things like that. And the anterior cingulate cortex has a monitoring function, keeping up in mind, am I on track on the task? Okay, to summarize the bits on the executive tasks. We have now um, spoken about quite a few. Stroop, go, no, go, stopping, Wisconsin card hunting, task switching, working memory span. And while there are quite a few more tasks out there, these are the most central ones, I would say. All of these tasks activate the prefrontal cortex. And often they overlap in their 
functional neuroanatomy, that means in the areas they are activating, as we have seen, for instance, in the GoLoco and Wisconsin Council test. However, there are clear differences as well. For instance, GoLoco activates ventral lateral prefrontal cortex, while Stroop activates dorsal lateral cortex, this implementation of control. So, as a bottom line, uh, it's a bit mixed. We could say, okay, these different executive tasks, they seem to share some commonalities. However, there seem to be some differences between the tasks as well, what exactly they are based on. We've seen that when we do a more detailed analysis of which processes are required by the task, then we can gain further insights. For example, also Stroop. That the adjusting behavior for the upcoming conflict is the lateral prefrontal cortex, while the monitoring and detection of conflict is more the anterior cingulate cortex. And we have seen an example where neuroimaging data allows insights into mental operations without the need for overt behavior in this Q only study where we have seen that. Okay, we do a break now, and after the break, we will continue with looking into more detail how the different executive tasks may be related to each other. One happy marriage, one couple, one thing basically, or are they pretty much separate concepts, separate things? Okay, let's say like a good 10 minutes or something.